Everywhere I look, I hear the term vibe coding. Apparently, you can build a fully functional app without writing a single code yourself, simply by relying on AI. So I want to put this to the test. I'm going to give myself five hours to build a fully functional app. This is from idea creation, creating the functions of the app, designing it, and in the end, I will have to actually test it out in the real world. But here are the rules. Rule number one, I have five hours, not a single minute more. Number two, I'm not allowed to write a single line of script myself. The AI has to do everything. And then rule number three, I have to do this in a language I'm definitely not familiar with. I'm doing a PhD, so I am familiar with R. So for this project, I'm using Swift, which is something I've never used before. And I'm also curious, are the skills I'm currently learning during my PhD going to be relevant in just a couple of years? So let's find out. So before I actually start coding, I need to make a plan. What are going to be the core features of my app? Because if I don't have a plan, I'm going to start focusing on little details that are so unimportant, but I'm going to get into a rabbit hole, waste loads of time, and then I'm gonna just be frustrated. So I need to figure out what I want this app to actually do and start focusing on the key bits first. So for the planning, I'm using an app called Freeform. So what I was thinking of building is a gym app where I can track my workouts and it has kind of like a rewarding type of feature. I know these types of apps exist. That's not the point of this video. So that is kind of the current plan, even though it looks a bit messy. I think it makes sense to me. So for the coding, I'm using two separate apps. The first one is called Xcode. What's really cool about it is that it actually shows you how it would already look on your phone. The second app, which is the Vibe Coding app that I use, is Cursor. Creating the first draft of the app was actually super easy. Within just two prompts, Cursor has built me a fully functional interface. So when clicking on the log a workout button, I can first select which type of workout I want to do. The different colors next to the workout name will come in use later. Then I also was already able to select an exercise from an already created list. When I click on a specific exercise, I'm then able to input weight, reps, and I can add as many sets as I want. Most gyms have like a couple of really odd machines you don't really find anywhere else. So I did account for that as well by allowing to manually add any exercise I want as well. Within just a few prompts, I also added a workout history calendar. The workout is indicated by color, so we see a blue circle because I've tracked a full body workout. If it was legs, the circle would be pink. But I came across a problem. When I added a second workout for that day, it just wouldn't show up in the calendar. And for some reason, Cursor just wasn't able to just fix it. I need a snack. I finally did it. It now shows both exercises on that day. Here you can see upper body and leg. Next, I wanted to implement a rewarding system. And I thought, what if the theme was a house plant? So every time you work out, your plant grows a meter. And I also wanted this to be reflected as an image. So at one meter, we would have a teeny tiny grass plant. After three, it grows into some leaves, then into a small pot, and so on, and so on. For more character, I also added in a fun little sentence that compares the height of the plant to some random objects. And now, when I add in a new workout and I've hit certain milestones, my plant will actually also grow. So now it just grew from a teeny tiny grass plant to some leaves. For the height comparison to random objects, I actually just asked Gemini. I didn't even fact check, to be honest. Next, it was time to decide on a name for the app. And again, I asked both Gemini and ChatGPT. To be honest, their outputs were quite similar. But in the end, I actually quite liked the name GrowFit because I felt like it fit the theme of the plant growing the more you work out. 
I also needed an app icon. Again, I asked both ChatGPT and Gemini, but to be honest, I really did not like the output. So I decided to just do it myself. So here you can see a time lapse of me trying to design my own app icon. This is actually sped up a thousand and two hundred times. But again, I wanted to capture the theme of the plant growing when working out. And this is the final app icon. It's not perfect, but to be honest, I prefer it over the output from the AI models. Next, I asked Cursor to make the design look a bit more sleeker because I wanted it to look more professional. And to be honest, it looked already much better after the first prompt, but I wanted better. And then I remembered something. I wanted to get some inspiration for how I want my app to look like. And I first tried Base44 simply because their ads have been banning my YouTube. I didn't like the homepage. I didn't think it looked that great. Uh, but I didn't mind the logging page of the workouts. Like I think this looks sleeker than what I have at the moment. But I also then wanted to check out Lovable because that is kind of the OG website builder. And here I really like the homepage. I think it's really cute. But I'm not too sure about this exercise thing. Like, for example, here, the sets, I don't think it makes sense because you often do different types of weights in different sets. But I like how the plant moves. So I think I'll try to do like a combination of a lovable and the base 44 output. What I'm thinking as well is, did I go about it the wrong way? Like, should I have done this first and then build my app upon it so that I already have the style included or is my way the right way like I don't know to be honest and I think this is something that you'll probably like learn through experience this is the first time that I've tried it I'm I mean you know relatively done with the app now it's just about the design but it's interesting to think that there's different approaches to building but yeah let's start making it look cute Now this is actually really cute because now my plant breathes and I feel like this makes such a difference, like it makes it come more alive. Cute! Okay, so I just finished my workout. I think the overall verdict is that this app is fully functional, which is quite crazy because it literally just took me five hours to build. So in overall, honestly, I think anyone can build an app nowadays if you have these tools. And regarding the question whether or not my PhD computational skills will be irrelevant in a few years, honestly, yes. And they might already be irrelevant, but I don't think those are the only skills that are necessary to build the app. So for example, in my PhD, I learned how to plan out projects, how to troubleshoot, how to solve problems. And I think those are the skills that will be relevant in the future as well. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed this video. Maybe it encourages you also to build an app. And I might even actually build more onto this app. So if there's any features that you think could be interesting, let me know. Bye.